Hey, I guess I'll just go ahead and uh, use this as a quick update. Not that I imagine there are many people uh, interested, but figured I'd still make it. Um, a lot has happened. <laughs> Um, I was really at the lowest point of my life when I uploaded the last video. Um, I'm not doing post -com this time around like I am with, uh, the last sort of update video that I did. This is all sort of live as I'm playing the game. I'll be going through whatever... Oh yeah, the backbone track is back. I'll be going through, um, a little more ink to try and get back up to, uh... We're gonna get X unlocked again. But I, I really didn't feel like going all the way to S plus 10. I think I'll go with the Japanese servers this time. I have wired connections, so that shouldn't be too unbearable. Besides, there are allegedly a lot of uh, people on the West Coast, and I played with them all the time back when I was like 2 and 3. But I suppose in any case, um... Where was I? Where am I now? And what's going on. So, um, I got top 10,000? I hardly even freaking played! Huh. Alright, well, I'll go to the lobby. Sorry, I didn't even check what, um, check what was up. But it was, uh, anyways, so, not sure if I ever officially sort of gave the reason why I left Cephalus Squad, um, the reason was ultimately, and you can go back and watch any of the numerous uploads about it, it was just the incredible irritation where any time I tried to punch in my perspective, I was either immediately cut off or the idea of my even having a dissenting point of view was so unbelievably laughable. And to an extent, I do have some responsibility in this. I played the part of the fool, and you know, it was in a lot of ways something that I suppose I I sort of got into the habit of doing just as a uh, I don't want to say defense mechanism. It's more of a um, because I don't think it was a defense mechanism, I think it was more of an offensive tactic, where in order to actually form connections with people, you know, making them laugh is a very good and easy way to do that. Um, and so ultimately, I would go about doing things in that way, and that has actually served me in a lot of ways. The problem- ah, shut the heck up. The problem with that is that, naturally, when you do play the part of the fool, people will treat you like a fool. And that's a kind of concerning when you are not a fool. I I've actually found that the expectation of me being a fool can actually be quite useful as... Much to my chagrin, I actually am quite intelligent, me, you know, I... Both my parents were MIT grads, and, and I'm still the stupid one in my family. Um, more on that went to art school. But in any case, without sort of tuning my own horn too much, I'm... I know what I'm talking about. I'm actually quite cautious to speak in uh, definitive ways unless I'm actually fairly well researched on topic. It's not to say I don't still make mistakes or get things wrong. I do all the time. That's not the question here. Um, but ultimately, if I'm not even able to present point of view on something just unimportant. Oh, gosh dang it. Maps change in half an hour. Um, let me just go ahead and do this go. Clumblet still sucks. But no, if I'm not even able to express my point of view on something unimportant or something that's not important to me, well, when it actually comes to my core values, and I'm respectful of people who don't necessarily share my values or opinions, you know, I think that they're wrong, but, you know, I don't go out of my way to kill or grade them. Or maybe perhaps a better way to phrase it is I didn't. It really was... I don't pick fights. 
I don't. I get into a lot of fights, but I do not pick them. I am just beyond ready to finish them if anyone's ever stupid enough to pick them with me. This was an... But, I suppose in the context of Sethal Squad, at the time I was, I guess, a little afraid to finish the fights and actually... I was afraid of burning a potential bridge, and the problem is if... It's not something that you should be willing to do at the drop of a hat, but if there is not a line that is understood that this is not to be crossed, then that line will be crossed repeatedly again and again and again. And it's... I remember there was a media company that they were so frustrated with how the dialogue was, where if anyone disagreed with the topic on uh, for issue, I won't say what it was, because I'm not about that. It was not a matter of they had a different perspective or different values, or they thought that there were certain factors that needed to be considered. No, it's that they clearly hated people, and that they did not want people to live their lives as they see fit. And the problem with that is that, obviously, then you can't have a conversation, because any criticism of an idea is inherently a personal attack. And the media company effectively did the same thing but the reverse. The argument was not that this was a good strategy. No, the argument was that it was a terrible, horrible strategy and it's just going to continue to make things worse. The reason they did it is because the only thing worse than having this horrible dialogue is allowing one side to get away with the dialogue completely unretaliated against. And so Ultimately, that's a perspective I had to take, um, where right, enough is enough. But then I had the, one of the worst experiences of my life, and that's saying something. I was skinned alive when I was 12. I would have rather been skinned alive twice more than the experience that I had to deal with over the summer of 22. So... I'm not going to go into too many details, but if you told me a year ago that I'd be arguing with a 30-year-old simp of an ex-girlfriend I didn't even know I had, I would have thought you were crazy. Simp of an ex-girlfriend I didn't even know I had, I mean, my back's not a girlfriend, but no, I, it was horrible, she was terrible, and chagrin. Um, this is one thing I do have to give credit where credit is due. I think it was Onesie who said that uh, when I do finally start dating, I will have White Knight Syndrome, and you know what? I did. I ignored very early warning signs because I wanted to believe that I was somehow wiser or smarter to ignore obvious and early signs of coming betrayal. And when I did, you know, it was just a simple situation of the fact that she used me. It's very dishonest, and so now there is a church I'm no longer welcome in, and really freaking sucked. Um, and this was right after I had actually moved over to, um, this was right after I actually moved to Florida. Stop dying, your lord! You have better weapons than I do. So I was in a very, very poor hang about that. I was completely baffled as to how this had happened. You know, I... And ultimately, I really did not want to just accept the reality of the fact that I had been lied to. I had been used. I... You gotta pick up the guy disconnected right away. Whatever. And, you know... At the same time, my roommate, who had been my best friend for 10 years, a person who I would have trusted with my life, stiffed me. He just got up one day and left. I was unfortunately, you know, not in a fantastic financial position to deal with that. Um, well, I, I shouldn't say I... I was in a... That is one 
thing I'm very fortunate I'm very fortunate to have, you know, money has thankfully never been issued to me, and I don't take that for granted. I, it's not something I've necessarily earned, it's also not something I've sort of mishandled in many ways, you know, a situation where my father, he was an immigrant to this country, he worked very hard to give me and my siblings a better life, and I I don't want to take advantage of that and just waste all the money and sort of this if you're familiar with biblical literature, the story of the prodigal son who winds up uh, squandering his inheritance. Um, it's not to say that, you know, he makes the right decision coming back to the father after he does screw up, but, you know, it's still wrong that he wastes all of his father's resources like that. By the same time, my father worked very hard to give me these resources, it would be very disrespectful for me to not take advantage of them as well. And, you know, I... I think that's ultimately a mistake. I, I feel like most people who come from wealth fall into one of those two categories, um, where they're either so prideful that they insist that they have to do it on their own, um, or they're ultimately so unbelievably stuck up and privileged, and that was a lot of the people I went to college with, that they don't actually understand that this is an opportunity that needs to be taken advantage of. That taken advantage of is the way I should phrase it. Actually, no, I think that's a perfectly fine way to phrase it. Where is the basket? Oh, there it is. You should take advantage of an opportunity that you're given, as long as it's, one, not unethical to do so, and two, not, you know, and being done for the sake of being done. For example, if I have the opportunity to get a job moving boxes, that's going to be a downgrade from my current position and will ultimately be helping less people. So ultimately it's going to be better for me to go ahead and stick to my current job, which is teaching kids to code, so we can actually get to the point where I'm getting too caught up in the economics. The point is, you know, I there was never a concern that I wouldn't, that I'd go homeless or that I wouldn't make it out of this. It was still incredibly frustrating that my roommate would this me. Again, this have been my best friend for 10 years. Um, and with that, this quota. Yeah, no, so this was a month after I had been dumped, and I was still under the delusion that I, you know, had a... that this was just some big misunderstanding that she just miscommunicated, um, that, you know, that door hadn't really been closed, and I suppose in the grand scheme of things, it's, I guess, not a door I would want to open, but it's still obnoxious that I didn't get a say in the matter. And... During all of this, and this is something no one actually ever, no one tells you about your first heartbreak, you'll you'll either eat so much that you gain a tremendous amount of weight, or you stop eating altogether. I was a latter. I probably, the week that she dumped me, had one full one. Um, I was down to 118 pounds, and I'm 6'1". Like, that is not a healthy weight for me to be at, and I, I was already underweight as it was, you know, I was probably hovering around 130, 135 beforehand. I'm happy to say now I'm back up to there, but that is obviously a horrible and atrocious um, all on my health, and as a matter of fact, I was even hospitalized at one point for a phosphate deficiency. Um, that was in September, though, so it's a little down the line. Then in, I think, so, as this was going on, this was also right when my work had sort of, I don't want to say got more stressful, but had gotten more, no, it, more stressful is the proper way to phrase it. It was more stressful, while my job was the one aspect of my life that didn't explode in my face, it was still just, you know, going through all of this nonsense, and I... to have everyone that you trusted in your life knife you in the back while you're slowly starving to death, that certainly isn't fun. Then I had a trip up to Boston, and I, you know, this was an appointment that I had needed ages ago, and I'm just going to say, the... 
that I needed, I found out I needed surgery, and that the only reason I did not know is because of the U.S.'s atrocious response to COVID-19. I, I had an appointment, literally, the week that the world shut down for COVID. I was unable to get that, I was unable to go to the appointment because everything was shut down, and so I had this rope in my ear that went uncaught for years. Just so I wouldn't get a virus that's, yes, a very, very deadly thing. I'm not going to downplay that. It is not the only thing that kills people. So now I actually have some pretty permanent hearing loss over a disease that really never had any risk of me. Which infuriates me. And I, I remember I was staying with some very close family friends of ours, and I remember I came out of surgery, and I... After I woke up, I remember uh, I was incredibly tired, and my... as I was just coming off of the anesthetic, and it was... Uh, I don't remember if it was a nurse or the doctor, but she had just told me, you're okay, and I just started crying and said, no, I'm not. It was a situation where... In, uh, around January or so, it, after, when I was hospitalized for phosphate deficiency, which was before the surgery, phosphate deficiency was before the surgery, I had my, um, I, I was given an appointment because after they verified that there was nothing actually wrong with me outside, physically, it really was just a matter of, uh, my diet that was preventing me from eating and keeping food down. As, uh, saying I couldn't eat, maybe that's a little misleading. If I would eat too much, I would throw up, so I really just eat the bare minimum to keep myself sustainable. Frankly, a little less than that. Um, so I, I finally got an appointment with a psychiatrist, and when I got that appointment, I was put on a very mild... Uh, I don't... <sighs> I always forget what the name of the generic drug is, but the brand name is Zoloft. I was put on a very small dose of that, 50 milligrams a day. Um, I, w I put this off for so long as I had been on pretty heavy antidepressants when I was very young. My eldest sister had had some success with this, so, though the antidepressants I was on, by any reasonable measurement, they just made my life... They made my situation worse, not better, and I already told my father that... The only, and I mentioned this in my previous video, if I did not believe that suicide was not a moral thing to do, I would have killed myself. There's no question about that. Um, and it was just everything collapsing. Um, but you know, it was, I told my father that, look, I mean, the only thing keeping me alive is literally my will. If the medicine screws up and it compromises that, I'm gone. And ultimately just got to the point where, you know, I really didn't view it as significant. Alright, um... Also, oh, there he is. Truth be told, I'm not paying that much attention. I can't be too detrimental. Um... Sorry, I'm not great multitasker. Maybe I should have done post uh, audio. Um, so that medicine, you know, eventually things finally started getting put back together. Um, actually, I, I did skip over the sort of hassle with Cephal Squad, though, which I suppose is, is a good story. So, as I was going through all this, I basically told myself, okay. For all the crap they put me through, you know, it wasn't worse than... It wasn't worse than what they, uh, had actually said to me. Um, so I was like, okay, you know what? If I could just get this minor temporary opioid for the hassle that I'm going through, you know, it's not a... It's not that it was a good situation, but it was perhaps a less bad situation than I was in before, and ultimately, you know, I, as Splatoon 3 was coming out, and 
Oof, the salt in the wound was that it came out on my freaking birthday, man. I was born 9999, Splatoon 3 came out on uh, September 9th when I turned 23. That sucked. Um, and I picked up the game expecting this to be something that I really would be able to pour a lot of my time into and energy, but I really just didn't enjoy video games anymore um, since I was dumped and I spent most of my time just on my couch, browsing YouTube shorts, which is horrible for you. But again, it was a situation where I deemed it maybe less bad than my current situation. I'm still a little bit addicted to them. They're really, uh, if I can make an advisement to you, you know, delete the YouTube app from your phone and also delete the TikTok app. Forget about the data they collect on you, which, you know, you may or may not be concerned about. I'm personally not super concerned. Um, but just in terms of the, uh, just in terms of what it does to the gray matter in your brain, it is, it is horrible. Um, but in any case, what am I talking about? Right, right. So, you know, and after I sort of ask if I can go ahead and rejoin, you know, they talk it over and ultimately they, they, this, this really irritates me. They did not call it an interview. It was an interview. They wanted me to interview for the team again. They wanted to go ahead and talk with me and another team member um, to see if, if see if I would be to see if it would be a good situation for the team. You cannot call that an interview. That's a freaking interview. It, that is exactly what I went through with my boss when I got through my job. That's exactly what we went through with other people who were there. That's called a freaking interview. And then, the, the fact that they had the audacity to gaslight me where, you know, it's, uh, well, I guess we just miscommunicated. No, you did not miscommunicate it. You are just calling it something it's not. You know what the word means. You know that what you are doing is an accurate description, is accurately fits what that word means, and you are intentionally misusing a different word because you do not like the connotation of that word. That is just not acceptable, and uh, I have very, very little patience for being that too. Especially in a situation where the other person knows full well what they are saying is not. And honestly, I get that was another frustration I had just generally with the team where, you know, I would phrase something a certain way and then they'd say, well, no, that's not how it is, it's this way. I'm just like, that's what I said. And it's like, no. It's like, okay, so you just don't like my characterization even if it's actually accurate. And, you know, eventually, because Onesie had offered, you know, well, you know, if you ever need to talk in here, or something like, I don't remember what he said exactly, I called him. And to his credit, at the very least, you know, when it came time to... When it came... When it came time to, well, what's over here? When I did, uh, try to call him and lay into him, I'm not gonna say I handled that situation. No, they didn't. Um, but ultimately, you know, it was credit. He did pick up and he did actually talk to me. But it was a situation where, you know, I laid into him for every single, just completely unacceptable thing. Um, and you know, I'll say it right here, including but not limited to sexual assaults. It is a mild hyperbole characterization, like, when we were at Smash and Splash, he smacked my ass a couple times. I had to, I told him not to, he did it again. I had to very clearly and firmly say that that's not was acceptable. You know, I, I'm a little shocked, like, I don't need to be told not to randomly smack people's asses. Um, you know, I understand that there might be certain cultures where that's considered a real thing. And look, you know, while I do call it sexual assault, that's not the part that bothers. It's not that I think, oh, I'm so violated. No, because I'm a guy, and while it's not popular to say, men are not sexually vulnerable in the same way women are. They're just not. Um, and, but the reason that irritated me is that, you know, it's not that I don't believe that. No, I do believe that women are not as vulnerable, or that men are not as vulnerable sexually as women. It's... 
not exactly a perspective that's necessarily shared, and it's like, okay, really? So you believe that this behavior is never acceptable under any circumstance, which I agree with, and yet you are engaging it. And it's just knowing that I don't think I am generally held to an unfair standard. I think I'm held to a pretty fair standard. That I have to, regardless of the hassle that's going on in my life, you know, I am expected to be proper and polite to the people around me, and there are certain behaviors that are just considered completely unacceptable. I think that's the way it should be. But why am I the only one held to that standard? And, you know, that was one of the things that I laid in him, and the constant apology that I got was, I'm sorry for everything. That is not an apology. If you, if you, if you wrong someone, you have, you need to apologize for that specific action, and actually take measure. It's not to say that you have to split care about everything, but it, 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 it's just a very basic moral responsibility, and, you know, I'm... I'm practicing Catholic, and that is something that you are morally obligated to do. Even after going to confession, you still have the responsibility to go ahead and make amends for the people that you've wronged. You know, sometimes that's not possible. You know, just an extreme case, like if you sock someone across the face, you can't exactly unsock them across the face. But maybe you do then go seek to, um... Maybe you buy him a drink next time, you know, apologize. It's not that it's a good thing to do, it's a bad thing to do. But people screw up, people make mistakes, and it's not the it's not the fact that he did this stupid thing that bothered me. Or any of the stupid things that he did. Because guess what? They did a lot of stupid things, and they said a lot of stupid stuff to me. I, I'm sure I had slights. The difference is when I did it, I offered a proper apology. I sought to make amends. Meanwhile, I was just expected to... I, I was criticized for even noticing that this behavior was unacceptable. And the amount of times I heard from Onesie, I'm going to change, you know, and that you know, I'm going to stop it off. And, and Even at the time, I was repeatedly calling his bluff, and was, you know, he just said, uh, well, you know, Hunter, I'm going to go ahead and stop picking on you for a what? And it's like, okay, well... It's not quite the picking on me that I mind, but, you know, fine, you know. And I said, alright, and he's like, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you, uh, trust me and are willing to give me a chance. It's like, oh no, I don't believe you for a moment. And then five minutes later, sure enough, he was picking on me again. Uh, and again, like, this is not something that I don't bear any responsibility in. One, I encourage it. Two, I allowed it to go on for so many freaking years. And, you know, it, it's not a situation where I'm swearing off these people for my life. No, I, I do believe that people have the capacity to change, that people can win for their past mistakes. I have done horrible things. Horrible things that I am ashamed of and that I wish I could take back, but I can't. And I have sought to make amends for that. If they legitimately offer an authentic apology and seek to make amends, I'm not going to go ahead and... Not that. I'm going to approach the apology with an immense amount of skepticism, just based off how many hollow and empty apologies I have been given in the past, but that's just proper prudence. That's not an absence of. It's not an absence of forgiveness. But, I mean, there's a reason that's even, you know, like I mentioned, I'm Catholic, you know, even the cardinal virtues are not a Catholic invention. That's actually from classical, um, I believe, Greek theology, where. Well, theology is probably not the right word. Philosophy, where the four cardinal virtues are fortitude, temperance, prudence, and justice. We, practicing these actively will, or generally, what's going to go ahead and, oh gosh, I can't want to go that It's going to help you lead a good and virtuous life. It, it, I feel like I was going somewhere with that, but you know, regardless, if you believe that, alright, you're entitled to be wrong, but you know, like, again, this is not a Christian invention, it's something that's been believed that people only stop believing for the last five minutes. And I think it's actually pretty harmful that we have. No, justice is a virtue that men get what are, that each man gets what is due to him. And I'm not going to deny the need for justice here. There is a need for justice. 
look, it, if they offered me an honest and real apology, I like I still talk to Sky Guys. It's not that I've sworn off the game or sworn off the group. It's just unbelievable assholes are unbelievable assholes. I'm not gonna pretend that they're not. So, where does that sort of leave? Um, well, I, I guess in terms of my life, my life story over the past two years, my life has substantially improved. You know, I got a raise at work. I now live in a better apartment, and I have a uh, better roommate. You know, and my standard for I remember my sister joke that uh, you know what makes my uh, my standard is for a better roommate you know, is that he pays his freaking bills. It used to be, you know. And this is another example, like, paying your bills, it's a freaking... will do less than the bare minimum, oh, it actually snaps up, so that's more important. And then expect to be rewarded for it. No, like, you sign a contract, you make an agreement that you actually have to follow through with that. I do! I understand, like, if it's... we're talking about... something like a random... Terms and condition agreements. I understand how you might not want to split hairs about that. Or I'm sure I'm not supposed to download this music, but I'm just downloading it to my MP3 player so I can play it in the car or something. Um, even though technically that's not the valid use of the license. Uh, you know. But if we're talking about like a major lease, like, no, you follow the fleeting rules on that. It's not your property. You are leasing it out. It's the name lease. That's not to say I don't have complaints about this apartment complex, no, they've uh, had quite a few irritations. I was speaking which I gotta go ahead and talk by the office. Um, I'll do that after this. But, you know, I got into a better apartment, better roommate, I found a better community to sort of engage in. Um, but the damage from all of this did not go away. And it's a situation where I am... Thank the good lord, I am in a very good position, where I, I still have pain, I, mean, I still have a lot of things that, you know, drive me up the wall. I'm still really frustrated about how much I was lied to and used over the past year or so, and how much I was taken advantage of. You know, it's not to, not to take away from my own responsibility. I ignored obvious warning signs of coming betrayal, and out of a sense of false virtue and piety, I ignored them. And, you know, I... To some extent, I, I don't think the punishment quite fit the crime. I think the punishment quite exceeded the crime. But regardless, there, was, there is undeniably some responsibility I bear on that. portion of your life back that you invested into something that was not going anywhere. And moreover, that then had, and I, I suppose I sympathize with Gab a little bit, as I think her sort of relationship situation was worse than mine. I don't go into details, as obviously that's her business. Um, but she did have a major breakup that she had to deal with. Um, I'm not going to say that my situation was like hers, as mine was far less serious, but you know, there are some similarities. And from that, there's inevitably some sympathy that comes from it. Nowhere in all of this did I ever 
spread my suffering farther than it needed to. And it, it's gotten to the point where it used to be if someone said something stupid, it's like, alright, whatever, they think something, they believe something incorrect, just let it slide, it's just not that big of a deal. No. I'm done with that. If you, if you pick a stupid fight with me, if you take an underhanded shot at me, I am going to make it so that if you wish to pursue that shot, it's no longer underhanded, and that it will have to see the light of day. If you, if you tell me that, you know, I have done something somehow improper, I'm going to require you to say precisely what it is, and justify your stupid and moronic position. I, ha I am no longer unwilling to shed blood in service of the truth, and like I said, I don't pick fights. But if you make a minor shot against me, I'm no longer going to overlook it. I'm going to shame, humiliate, and de degrade you until you actually learn to behave. And if this burns bridges, this burns bridges. But no amount of bridges I could burn is worse than the amount of abuse and harassment that I endured for God knows how long. All just for some false sense of appreciation and approval. And it's, it's just really unfortunate how much, and even in communities that supposedly share my values, the moment that it's clear that people who the moment that it's clear that the people whom they are close with have done something wrong, now all of a sudden, they demand a patience and a mercy that was not afforded to me. And I do- and I'm not gonna, going to deny them mercy, but I'm also not going to deny them justice. And so, I suppose, what does that mean in the context of uh, this channel and playing sports here? The answer is, you know, if I'm a betting man, I'm never, you know, I, I'd probably say 90% chance I never get the proper apology, I never get the proper olive branch, I never get the amends that's owed to me for the years upon years upon years, I shouldn't say years upon years upon years, that makes it sound like decades, but for the years of just constant disrespect, and, and I'm never gonna get, I'm never going to get compensation for that. I'm never going to be, I'm never going to get an apology, I'm never going to get the efforts that they spent in terms of bugging me, in terms of actually amending the damage that has been caused. It's never going to happen. I'm not, I, I don't say that because I think it is impossible, I say that because I think it is so incredibly improbable that it's not worth keeping on my radar. You know, so... If 1Z is watching this, I'm sure he'll come up with some perfectly valid excuse for, well, I can't apologize to him because it would just cause more pain. No, you just have to actually be an apology or, you know, well, it's been so long at this point, you know, can I really go back? Yeah, you can. There's no statute on limitation, limitations on making amends. You just gotta do it. And so, I guess with that, that's sort of the situation I'm in. I'm really happy that I'm in a much better spot, but I'm perfectly willing to... I'm perfectly willing to fight with people who are dumb enough to try me. I was skinned alive when I was 12. I have had 10 surgeries, and I, and I have had three catheters before I was even a man. I've been blackmailed, I've been lied to, used, humiliated, I have been through a tremendous amount. I don't say this to sort of stroke my own ego. I say this so that if any of my enemies are watching this, I want them to know exactly how much pain I am capable of withstanding. Exactly what I am willing to do if they pick a stupid fight. So, will I upload more? Probably not. You know, I just don't really see a whole lot of point in it. You know, I mean, maybe, maybe there will be something where maybe I will bring Achieving Excellence back. The fact that um, now that ranked is structured the way it is, I think it actually works quite well for the format. Um, you know, I do 
five battles, and if I win them all, you know, I win the series. If I lose them all, I lose the series. Um, as for what the punishment should be, um, I think that would be the way that the series would actually be entertaining. But I'm still thinking. The thing was, I have to scrub or re-roll a uh, piece of pure gear. Um, but I feel like that might be a bit intense, and especially if X rank is actually quality players, which usually is. Um, I'll say that there aren't frustrations, you know. But anyways, you know that's sort of the thing I'm thinking about. So, for those of you who have stuck around through all of this, you know, I wish you the best. I, I'm actually quite impressed that you're even watching this. It's uh, quite interesting. If you are one of the enemies that I am referring to, you'll have the option to apologize. But if you're not going to give a proper apology, you're right, you shouldn't bother. And so with that, goodbye.